following is a production of the Department of Broadcasting and Journalism at Western Illinois University. Contract negotiations between WIU's faculty union and administration have had a little movement. Coming up, what those two partners are saying about the next steps. And later on in sports, a homecoming showdown on Saturday of outstanding performances that rewrote the Leatherneck football record books. Plus, the leaves are changing and it's looking a lot like fall. But will it feel like it soon? Your Storm Team 3's five-day forecast is coming up. Live from Salee Hall in high definition. News 3 starts now. Contract discussions for faculty and some staff at WRU are coming to a halt after failed negotiations with the administration over the past 10 months. Good afternoon. Welcome to Live at 4. I'm Danny Fry. I'm Nick Garrick. Proposals for the new contract include how faculty should be compensated, how many classes they should teach, and other parts of the job. This, is, this has all been complicated by Illinois' recent budget impasse. News 3's Devin Brooks has, the following, has been following this story. He's here with us now. That's right, Nick and Danny. UPI Local 4100 members have been working on their expired contract since this summer. Both sides have been meeting for nearly a year, but a compromise has not yet been reached. Now, the two sides are headed to mediation. Our members are saying they're done. This is the sentiment about contract negotiations from UPI, the University Professionals of Illinois, who represents 612 faculty and staff at Western Illinois University. Since October 2016, UPI has been at the bargaining table over contract negotiations with administration at WIU. The union is not pleased with the proposals university leaders have laid out, calling their offers extreme that will produce deep and damaging cuts. Uh, the administration started out with what I would characterize and what others characterize as an extreme Proposal. WIU contract administrator Russ Morgan says due to the low enrollment and the recent two-year state budget impasse, the university had to rethink how to reduce costs and generate more revenue. And as we work on this new contract, we have to keep in mind that you know the, the state's um, appropriation to the WIU budget is, is going to, you know, probably continue to, to, to shrink. Union leaders express their understanding of the impact the state's budget uncertainty and enrollment have caused, but they feel the proposals from the administration are not what's best for the school's future or their members. We cannot agree to changes that we think are going to harm the long-term success of this university, that we think are going to harm the student experience at this university, and that we think are going to harm our faculty and our employees on certain non-economic issues, compensation is still one of the main points of disagreements. All of our tentative agreements are on non-compensation issues. And so by compensation, we really mean anything that deals with money. The administration wants UPI to take a 3% annual salary reduction in fiscal year 19 for the duration of the contract, whereas UPI is asking for annual raises to their salary tied to 90% of the consumer price index in 2020, 2021, and 2022. But this is something school leadership say is not feasible. We are at a point where if salaries continue to drop below their peer institutions, this university is no longer going to be competitive. We're actually being asked to take a salary decrease. Um, but that's not happening anywhere else in the state. Well, you know, we're talking about a, a lot of extra money that we put on the books for the university in a time where we simply had to be tightening our belts. On Friday, UPI members packed the Board of Trustees meeting, where several union faculty members made public comments on why the board should pass a resolution to keep salaries average to peer institutions. And so for me, it's not even just about motivation of loss of money, but the ability to afford to stay here if our salaries don't stay at or above those larger institutes. Western should be proud. We have a great faculty. Initially, WIU administration proposed to increase faculty workload. However, they have removed that proposal. UPI has proposed to reduce workload, but administration says the university is not in the position financially to allow that. Now, we've costed out that proposal. 
right? If we, in other words, if we reduced everybody's teaching load as UPI has proposed, what it would do is it would require the university to hire approximately 50 new faculty Almost members, three million dollars, right? And the university simply isn't in a in a place where we can do that right now. Following months of talks with little progress, the administration decided to call for mediation to help a process we're told the university has not gone through in the past. This is one option where both sides are hopeful this will bring a fresh perspective. The hope is that a mediator will be an outside perspective or an outside voice and he may see something that neither team is seeing right now. As the union and administration convene with an outside voice, both parties say they're optimistic that they will come to a compromise. The university will be fine. We'll reach an agreement. Um, and hopefully an agreement that both sides can, can live with. So we believe that these problems can be solved. We believe the administration has the ability to solve them, and we believe the administration will solve them. Mediation sessions are expected in November. News 3 will continue to follow the latest developments as both sides work towards an agreement. Nick Danny. And, and Devin, what is the potential for a strike by the union if they don't come to a co compromise ultimately? We asked that question, and essentially they would have to give an 11-day notice. So they're not considering that right now. However, if the administration were to give their last uh, impulse, their last offer, then the union could vote it down. And essentially, that could mean anything. So we're going to follow it, see where we go from here, and we'll continue to update. That's great. Thank you, Devin. Sure. A, Kaw a Kawani man is un in custody after firing a gun during a fight near the south end of WIU's campus. The incident caught on video circulated on Facebook this week. You can hear two shots fired at the end. Investigators determined that the fight occurred near the corner at the 300 block of West Adams Street. Several suspects were questioned by police and then released. Police arrested 23-year-old Jaquan Johnson in Kiwani yesterday afternoon. He is being held at Henry County, County Jail on bond. Johnson, Johnson was charged with unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon and aggravated discharge of a firearm. His bond add up to $150,000, according to the Macomb Police. Other arrests are anticipated and they're still investigating. Local law enforcement officers are giving residents a chance to come meet and speak with them. The event will take place tomorrow morning in the University Union. It's coffee with a cop in the Union Concourse from 9 to 11. Coffee will be provided by Sodexo for the event. A string of bike thefts have occurred this semester on WIU's campus. According to OPS, eight bicycles value, valued at a total of $2,500 have been reported stolen. The thefts occurred between September 12th and 22nd. Two 18-year-old male WIU students were arrested in September within a day of each other connected to the bike thefts on the campus. Coming up on News 3 Live at 4, everyone has their favorite childhood board games, but do they really have to stay in your childhood? How you can still enjoy those games ahead. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. Okay, but remember, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You 
tell me to stay away from drugs, to always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. My favorite thing about News 3 is you're constantly working with someone. If you're not going to work with someone, then your show's not going to go right. News 3 has really got me ready and prepared for the outside world. Traveling to do a tornado story, or if that even means traveling to Iowa to cover third graders, um, I get to work with some fantastic people. It wouldn't be the show that it was today without the production crew, without our anchors, without our talent. It's really a team effort, and I am I'm beyond blessed to be able to be here. Live from Salee Hall in high definition. Live at 4 continues. The Ray Rock Hansen statue has been unveiled at Western Illinois University. The bronze statue was exhibited in a ceremony on Friday afternoon. It was created by WIU Associate Professor of Art Duke Orsler. Hansen was a famous Western Illinois coach, athletic director, World War I and World War II Marine Corps veteran. You can see the statue near the north entrance of Hansen Field. A local game store is inviting the community out for a different kind of gaming experience. News 3's Terrence Black has the story. I'm going to move this guy here for six victory points. At the Cosmic Game Emporium, you're never too old to enjoy an old-fashioned board game. Here on the north side square of downtown Macomb, Adam Kozlowski has opened his store to the gamers in the community. We just celebrated our third year anniversary, so we've been doing it every Tuesday night since then, so for the last three years. Uh, we just moved to this location this last summer. And after a hard day of work, students, parents, and even WIU faculty and staff stopped by to take their shot at being the number one gamer. I think it's a great place for the community. It's very fam family friendly. Um, it's female friendly. A woman can walk in here and not feel like she's out of place. And if you're thinking there's no game for you, there's nearly 1,000 different games sold at the Emporium, suitable for all ages. However, the board games available to play on game nights are kept behind the counter. Not every game is for everyone, but there's a game for everyone. <laughs> And I like that. I have people in all the time who are like, ah, I'm not really into games. And then we'll get talking and they're like, well, we, I grew up playing Pinochle and I love that game. And I'm like, that's a game. You like a game. And with all of these games to choose from, you're sure to find one to call your favorite. For News 3, I'm Terrence Black. Game nights are every Tuesday from 6 until 9 p.m. If you would like more information about the Cosmic Game Emporium or any upcoming events, visit their Facebook page. We've seen clouds today. Could this lead to some much needed rain? Molly Naisland has your five day Storm Team 3 forecast coming up. I think just working with everybody in the newsroom, everybody has such a great camaraderie. All the opportunities that I've been given here have just been amazing to expand on that resume. I try not to beat myself up in the mistakes I make because there's so many opportunities. Just giving that experience, and this is how I got to do things in the real world, is really what the broadcasting and journalism department has done for me. When you have a really good show and that everybody nailed it, I mean, that's one of the best feelings in the world. nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Garrett Covington chose Western Illinois University because of the law enforcement program and the chance to be a leatherneck. Western has one of the best law enforcement programs in the nation 
and I get to play the game I love. Whether I go pro or I go to law school, because of Western, I would take my success to another level. I am a success story. I am a leatherneck. Think purple, think success. Think Western Illinois University. Good afternoon and welcome back Macomb. We are seeing some cloudy skies out there today with our highs at current temperatures at 79 degrees. Our dew point is currently sitting at 66 with our humidity at 65%. So it's a little bit humid out, but it's not too bad. And our winds are out of the south southwest at 13 miles per hour. Taking a look at our almanac, we have our temperatures are a little bit higher than what we're used to seeing with our high today at 79 degrees and our low at 64. On average, we are usually seeing a high of 70 degrees and then 46 for a low. But back in the not so distant past of 2006, we topped out our highs at 95 degrees and back in 1974, we hit below freezing at 25 degrees. Taking a look now at our Midwest weather tracker, as you can see, there's plenty of clouds over our area, but as we saw as the day tracked on, those clouds dissipated and we saw a little bit more sun peek through those cracks. Now, this is our water vapor imagery. This shows how much moisture is in the air, and as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on over our area, which is making it very difficult for any pop-up thunderstorms or showers to appear. Now, looking at our current temperatures, here in Macomb, we are sitting at 79 degrees. Down in Beardstown, we are seeing their highs at 77 and 79 over in Quincy. So it's a little bit toasty out there. Don't put those jackets away yet. But tonight, we're going to dip down into the 60s with 64 degrees here in Macomb, 68 down in Quincy, and 64 over in Keokuk. Looking at tomorrow, we're going to be a little bit colder than what we are seeing today, with highs in the area only getting up into the lower 70s, with 71 here in Macomb, 73 down in Beardston, and 71 up in Burlington. And then tomorrow night, we're going to be getting a little bit chillier out there, with our lows bottoming out at 53 degrees here in Macomb, 57 in Beardstown, and a little bit warmer over in Quincy. You will be seeing your temperatures at 62 degrees. Looking at tonight, it's going to be pretty cloudy out there, everyone, with some chances of rain, but very minimal at best, with our lows hitting 64 degrees and our winds out of the south-southwest at 7 miles per hour. Now, these southerly winds are going to be bringing a little bit more moisture into the area, making it possible for some showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to be seeing our highs at 71 degrees, winds out of the north at 7 miles per hour, with, again, some scattered thunderstorms in the area. Now looking at our five-day forecast, we're going to be seeing some rain on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with our highs topping out in the 70s with 71 on Wednesday, 74 on Thursday and Friday. And then on Saturday, those rain showers are going to be moving out of the area and we're going to be seeing our highs only getting up to 69 degrees. And then to close out your weekend, we're going to be bringing those rain showers back into the area with a high of 76 degrees. Gotcha. So Saturday is really going to be our only break where we can stay dry, I guess, for this next few Definitely. days. Definitely. Uh, the chances for rain for the rest of the week are pretty low, but still, Saturday is going to be your best chance for some sunny skies. Really? That's great. I, fall's all around the corner, so I'm kind of excited for it still. But now, Danny, I heard sports has been a little, well, a little you see, busy. You this? see all these papers that we got here. That's how much sports we have for you. Very busy sports weekend throughout the western side of the state, including high school football on Friday night from Warsaw, where Macomb High tried to keep its playoff hopes alive and a Bushnell for the Spark Clones homecoming. And Western Illinois men's soccer tries to pace the summit after a solid start to league play. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land. Only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires.
I think what I love most about News 3 is that we're really provided with a real world experience. We're able to get hands on work in news and it's very similar to what you would find in a real newsroom, but everyone around here is really good about pushing you to be your best. News 3 has really taught me to believe in myself and that if you work hard, you can achieve anything you want. News can sometimes be really tricky and you have a lot of roadblocks. All of us hold each other to really high standards and I think that really shows in our newscast. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Live at Four. The Macomb High School football team fought to keep its playoff hopes alive on Friday night. It was pretty safe to say that head coach Tony Weston was fired up before the game against West Hancock, but what a game Bryce Wilson would have for the Titans. Here he goes up the middle to put the Titans of West Hancock on the board first. Three minutes into the ball game, Wilson breaks free down the sideline. Look at him go, an 87-yard touchdown run. There's not a bomber in sight that can catch him. West Hancock literally trying to run away with this game. This time, the Titans mixed up a little bit. Riley Langford carves him up for the Titan touchdown. Taken down, but just a little bit too late. And then later on in the ball game, after a domination by West Hancock, Chase Hartwick goes round the outside, round the outside, hurdles the defender, and dives in eventually for six more Titan points. McComb did eventually get things going offensively after halftime, but West Hancock cruises to 6 0 of a 68 to 20 victory that officially knocked the Bombers out of playoff contention. We have a nice little graphic for you. It was 68 to 20. The Bombers try to rebound against Quincy Notre Dame on Friday. Great crowd on hand for homecoming, but the Bushnell West Prairie Spark Loans had their work. There's that graphic I was talking to you guys about and had their work cut out for them. That's Bushnell West Prairie against the undefeated Farmington Farmers. Let's see if we can go to that highlight that we have a lot going on. Oh, hey, all right. Farmington driving early in the first quarter after you look at the big crowd there. Hayden brought with a heads up play, dumping it off to Ethan Kenny, who sheds a tackle and will score. Evan Merriam plunges in and for some reason we got that puppy in slow-mo there I think a little bit. Evan Marion eventually would go and plunge in from up close 12-0 Farmers in the opening corner. The Farmers would go down to the red zone again, brought threads, would thread the needle to Jake Urez. This is an ultra slow highlight. We'll go ahead and go to the final score. Farmington all over Bushnell West Prairie 42-6 the final score as we move on to Western Illinois athletics will go over to Western Illinois men's soccer WIU men's soccer in action and they are taking on EIU see if these highlights are at normal speed Armo Kuasi steps in front of the Panther pass opens up the scoring just 37 seconds into the game what a nice start for the Leathernecks and Tim Trilk earned Summit League Defensive Player of the Week and you see why here as he defends a free kick by showing a mean right hook punching it away. Western tries to catch Eastern napping when Drew Whalen, a little sneaky, sneaks behind several defenders and he'll direct this cross all the way home from Paul Kerdorf. Just go home. WIU shuts out EIU 2-0 to move to 2-0 in Summit League play. The Leathernecks host NJCAA foe Lincoln Land Community College Saturday at 1. WIU women's soccer dropped a close 1-0 contest on Saturday against Illinois State as the Leathernecks end up with only one non-conference win. But this doesn't bother or concern Director of Soccer Dr. Eric Johnson while heading into the brunt of Summit League action. Obviously the big step is to be able to win a, a league game 
and uh, they're coming up here rather shortly, see if that we can uh, tighten up defensively and then also create more chances uh, at the other end. Western continues Summit League play Sunday at John McKenzie Alumni Field against Fort Wayne. Almost no introduction needed, but I'll do it anyway with all the storylines surrounding Saturday's football homecoming showdown against South Dakota. Current WIU head coach and former Leatherneck head coach Bob Nielsen with his signature shirt and tie meeting at midfield. Final seconds of the first half, Minnesota transfer for South Dakota. Chris Strebler rolls and finds Josh Hale. The Coyotes in control 24-6 at halftime and led by as many as 32 points. That all changed with five minutes left in the third. Sean McGuire unleashes a 61 yard strike over the middle to Jalen Acklin, who is on his way to a monster game. Then to the fourth quarter as Acklin goes and I think we have a case of the really, really slow highlights again. I don't know what we got to do to talk to the doctor to get that fixed. And here is Jalen Acklin. He'll go in 38 to 27 at this point, seven minutes remaining. Two minutes to go in regulation. Acklin will do a little Bobbing and weaving. How about bobbing for apples this time in the fall? He's bobbing for touchdowns. 41 yards to the end zone. And could the Leathernecks pull off a comeback for the ages? Well, spoiler alert, they, you know, they didn't. Uh, Leathernecks down 38-33, only 34 seconds left. A uh, heave from McGuire picked off by Danny Rambo. What a name. And that ends the comeback effort of 27 unanswered points. But Acklin sets the WIU single game receptions record and single game receiving yards record with his 19 catch 343 yard performance. The 343 yards is fourth all time in an FCS game receiving. Oh, and by the way, defensively, Brett Taylor tackled everybody, recorded a career high 28 tackles, matching Rodney Harrison's program record. Up next is a Saturday test in the Cedar Valley at Northern Iowa, Saturday at four. That was my attempt at sports. Final word next. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. that I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly, just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. your will but however loud the loudness gets however many cheese puffs may fly you're the driver the one in control stand firm just wait and move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive never give up till they buckle up Western Illinois University allows you to think for yourself and to discover the freedom to become your own. Own it. Think purple. Think success. Think Western Illinois University. Hero by being prepared for an emergency. First, make a plan. Call a family meeting to plan for things like how to connect with loved ones after an emergency or your escape route. I am not fast. Build a kit. When disaster strikes, it's important to have enough supplies to last three days. And don't forget the batteries. Low battery. Visit ready.gov slash kids for more preparedness tips. There's a storybook homecoming this weekend as the WRU and Macomb community took part in Saturday's parade. Marching bands, floats, and more marched down the parade route to the theme of a tale of a leatherneck parade. Winners of the parade included Lasso Casa Latino and Tradition and Lincoln Washington and Grody Halls. Unfortunately, News 3 did not walk away winners. Maybe next year, guys. Maybe I don't know maybe. what we got to do. I mean, we had two trucks that were from sponsors. They looked great. They were pretty new. We had Jen Holloman, my normal anchor. She was yelling so loud that she lost exactly. her voice and couldn't do the exactly. show today. And DJ Reckless. So, I of mean, it was, it was just perfect. But All anyway, right. so...
How's the weather going to look? The weather's actually looking all right for the rest of the week. However, we do have some rain uh, at chances in the forecast for the rest of the week, but some pretty decent temperatures. And uh, we're going to see some clearer skies on Saturday, but then that rain's going to be coming back in for us on uh, Sunday. So it's not looking too bad out there for this uh, week. Okay. Try, try to keep that rain away. Thanks. That is all for us today. But we're online all the time. Stay up to date with us, News 3, WIU.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Just search our handle, News 3, WIU. You can also search for us on YouTube and subscribe. Thank you for joining us this evening. From all of us at News 3, have a good night, McComb.